Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to this uh, Turbo Business interview. My guest today is Catherine Pallon Brinkworth. Good morning, Catherine. Is the sun shining where you are? Oh, the sun is glorious right here. I'm at home on the Gold Coast today, Tom. Oh, you're and just it's beautiful. Couple, it's beautiful. A couple of hours south uh, from here. We're on the Sunshine Coast, as you probably know. The, it's the same sun shining up here, I suspect. Uh, now, <laughs> Catherine, it's a delight to have you along. I've followed your your uh, your business and your reputation which is an impeccable pedigree for a couple of decades now I guess and so it's really great to have you have you here on our little TV show so to speak now for those of you who don't know Catherine quite as well as I do she's the managing director of progress performance international it's a business development and people performance consultancy established in 1988 that's uh, 26 years I think so Yes. You're going to start to know a bit about things pretty soon, I imagine. Uh, I hope. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Folks, Catherine is, all joking aside, Catherine is a specialist in strategic planning, leadership, which is going to be today's subject, uh, sales and people skills training, and her special gift really, I think, is, 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 is it's in recognizing and helping people to realize the potential that exists unseen, so to speak. Now, just to put this in context, Catherine's background is actually quite a, uh, how would you be say, a rational one. Uh, I mean, leadership can be an esoteric type subject, doesn't have to be a course, but, but you actually got an accountancy, originally an accountancy background, I believe, is that right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Great business background. So, but it wasn't, in, <clears throat> I wanted to know more. Yeah, so then you got into sales and marketing and leadership. <clears throat> Pardon my voice, bit of a frog this morning. Uh, and I think it's fair to say you're now quite a passionate behavioural scientist. Uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, yes. Really love what makes us do what we do. Pe and how could we do better? Pe people are fascinating. I, I, I often fascinate myself. <laughs> Not always for the right reasons, I might add. Okay, so Catherine, the, as you know, we've got a five-minute uh, countdown timer here. Uh, the subject is realizing potential. Our time starts now. Let's kick it off. How do you recognize potential? It's a great question, and um, I'm glad you asked it, Tom, because it's really the major challenge for all of us, I think, is looking at where the positive gap is. Um, it's looking at the opportunity, at the capacity for even more, no matter how good someone is, how much better could they be? And how much better could your business be than it is now? And mm. it doesn't mean that anything you're doing now is wrong. So I reckon there's a number of areas that you look at. One is, what happens when you stuff up? What are you thinking? What are you feeling? Um, what dysfunctional patterns do you fall into? That will tell you what the potential is in one certain direction. If it's about building your team, have a look at the troublemakers. Have a look at the ones who argue and dispute and who think they might know better because they're the future leaders. They're the future leaders. Can, the, the, yeah. the, the, opinion, the opinionated, awkward ones that challenge you. Yeah, and they might not even be opinionated. They might just be the, well, why do we do that? Um, most of us as children used to okay. say, why, why, why? My mother used to say, because why is a crooked letter and it's no better? And I don't think that that helped the level of inquiry that most of us need to follow. Mm. Mm. Why is the sky blue? Okay, so that's one thing you're looking for in the, in the potential for a future leader. We've, we understand we've all got potential to do better and the businesses can always do better. Are there anything else you look for specific in a, in a potential, in a future leader in, in, a, in, a, in a business other than the, the challenging, perhaps, the status quo? Obviously, there's a level of competency that you want. Um, that just That's a given. But the other two things I think are critical. One is courage, and that's why the troublemakers stand out, because they have the guts mm. to actually put their hand up and say, this isn't working, how could it be done better? Whereas a lot of people much prefer to sit in the background and, and just right. pretend everything's okay and complain about it behind the scenes. So it's courage, it's commitment, it's that willingness to come in a little earlier or to do a little bit extra, that's leadership uh, because it's setting an example apart from anything else. And the other thing you want is someone who cares. Um, if you can recognize the potential in someone just because they care, they're keen, you can generally teach them. You can help a good worker to become more visionary. You can help an undisciplined visionary to become more organized and systemized and structured. And you're pretty good at that, Tom. Hmm. Well, 
I'm glad the the facade is there at least. <laughs> my my little trick is that I get everyone else to do the organising. I just show up. I like that. Um, okay, so talking about realising potential, we're just coming out of a fairly horrendous global financial crisis. In those sort of circumstances, do you have any tips for motivating, inspiring people when perhaps the results are getting pretty hard to come by? Two minutes left. Okay, good. Um, yeah, first of all, understand they will only be motivated by their motivation, not by yours. Catherine's second law of leadership is that people will always perform for their reasons, not yours. Mm. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is to understand that we're living in an age of enterprise, not entitlement, and to perhaps need to take on board the education of your people to have them understand that contribution will be rewarded, mm. not just turning up for longevity. Folks, I hope you're listening to this. This is the rich voice of experience. And whilst the some of the ideas may not be new to you, this is what it takes. Let's look at uh, one minute 15 left. A lot of small business owners may think that because their business is so small that leadership is not relevant. What, what would you say to that? I would say that I run a fairly small business. Every time I have stuffed up, it is a leadership issue. <laughs> Everything that's going wrong in your business is a leadership issue. Right? Leadership is about the vision, the purpose, the values, setting the culture, the standards, the expectations, um, the inspiration of your people, the inspiration of your target market. It's absolutely everything. I have a business wheel of fortune that I work with people on, which has eight spokes. And if all eight aren't strong, the business mm. will fall over in some way. Leadership is the top spoke. It's the one that drives all the others and makes it happen. So in small business, it's everything. 25 seconds left, folks. The website you should check out is www.catherinepallenbrinkworth.com. There will be a link posted below the video, uh, but it's catherinepallenbrinkworth.com. 10 seconds left. Catherine, if you could change anything in the world, what would it be? Five seconds. Hmm. Yeah, my secret mission that I try not to tell anybody because most people think it's a bit woo-woo is that I really want to... <laughs>